This is my main editing desktop. On it, I do all of my editing, rendering, and many other tasks. Despite being made 10 years ago, I'd say it's a pretty good computer. It's got a Core i7-860. It's got 4 cores and 8 threads, which honestly isn't too bad for today and was pretty good for 2010. 8GB of DDR3. It has 4 2GB RAM sticks. The graphics card is pretty bad and I plan on updating it soon. It's a GeForce GT 620. It has a 300 watt power supply. It's got a DVD-ROM with burn, flip, burn. And if you don't know what that means, go look up Lightscribe. On the front, there's USB 2 and audio. Every SD card adapter you'll ever need. On the back, we have the power supply, the GT 620, the audio, the unused graphics ports, Ethernet and USB, and even Firewire, and also optical audio. And some low profile knockouts that lead to nowhere that really there's nowhere to put anything. The cooling includes the power supply fan, the case fan, and a CPU fan. It's honestly a cool and also strange computer, and I really actually like strange different electronics that are different from all the rest. The whole thing here is backwards, I mean usually the CPU is up there and as you can see even like, well you probably can't see what the cables, but text on the motherboard is upside down, um, you got the graphics card, basically I guess the fan side up, and um, it's up there when the I.O. is down there, I mean everything is just all backwards on this machine. Um, and that's how it was um, then, and you might think that I might be um, not be able to upgrade the motherboard, but actually it'll work just fine. It's just everything will be upside down, which I guess is fine. It just may not look appealing if you have like a glass case and have some nice stuff on the inside there, so it's kind of interesting. Now the cable management in this machine is pretty bad, mostly because there aren't any really like ways to route the cables behind the motherboard or anything like that. Now I brought you here today to upgrade the one terabyte Seagate Barracuda hard drive to a new SSD. After removing the bay, you can see that I have the operating system hard drive and a second one terabyte hard drive that was actually the original one that contains Windows 7 and some of our old files. We don't need to keep that hard drive in there. So I went to Micro Center and bought an SSD, a 2.5 inch mount, and a SATA cable, just an extra one in case I needed it. Um, I was reluctant to buy in the mount because I knew it would probably, you probably don't really need it, and I could just duct tape it to the thing, but I didn't want to end up on tech support gore. So here I have a SATA cable for my SSD here. It's 120 gigabyte, not the nicest brand, it's kind of like their base model brand. Uh, not really too much there, but um, I do have a mounting bracket for it and cable. This is just kind of like here's the specs of it. It's not the nicest, but I'm going to see if it um, changes anything with the booting of the computer. And plus, I wanted still, um, even if I just got a hard drive for it, I wanted a different one for my OS and then one for just a storage drive just to have stuff on the computer. So, yeah, here we go. Well here we are, it's all installed, the new SSD, and we've got the old hard drive in there too. Now it is time to plug in the 37 cables I have in the back there. I had a problem with it, but I fixed it, and I had to reconnect everything again, but it's all working. The SSD, it wouldn't turn on with the SSD plugged in, and then I just kind of unplugged it, reseated all the cables, and it's working fine now, so it's kind of weird. Okay, so, here, there was the SSD that popped up on there, or at least better than my other monitor, and my, you, did I get that on camera? You had to see that, oh, still booting, and of course this is still slow because it's on the hard drive, and I am recording this, and you know what, I should probably record the times with the stopwatch too, so, see, it's taking a really long time to boot, for some reason this isn't normal, of course nothing normal happens when you record something. So I cloned the drive and encountered problem number one. It wasn't booting from either the hard drive or the SSD because the system reserve partition was corrupted. But with a few commands, it got repaired. It seems to me everything works. Um, only thing is system reserved. I don't have my original hard drive plugged in. I will, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it, but I'm gonna keep my original files on there just in case I notice something 
something goes wrong, I still have my all my files backed up and stuff like that. And then I'll put it on my hard drive, my eight terabyte. Um, this has uh, the system reserve is still um, on there, and um, these always bug me. I don't know why those are always there, but and, and I like to keep hidden items turned on a lot of times because I go in app data a lot to modify stuff. So now let's see which one boots up faster. Now I didn't check the times of the hard drive and SSD booting until editing and um, I'll talk more about why the hard drive did better than the SSD later. One fine day, or at least it was fine until the problems occurred, but anyway, that day I was using Microsoft Word when suddenly the machine just froze. So I waited a little bit and then still didn't get fixed so I just um, powered off the machine held down the power button for five seconds and restarted well Windows started to boot up it took a long time I mean it was an SSD it should took quicker but it took a long time and then suddenly I get a blue screen and it says inaccessible boot device and okay I was like okay sometimes that just happens so I restart and I kept getting the same message over and over and over and I did some troubleshooting and I found out that you could read all the data on it but you couldn't write anything nothing could be changed on it you couldn't even partition the drive it was just locked and I checked and it didn't say locked in any partition tools you couldn't write any data and you couldn't even partition the drive it was a read-only drive from then on I tried every troubleshooting thing or some special erase thing and then I got to the point where I tried installing new firmware. Um, and as you can see, this is how it went. It is currently repairing, and I really hope this can work. Not really so that um, I can use this again, because I am not using this if it's this cheap. Um, but more just to experiment and see if this thing can really get fixed. Now, it's kind of stuck here at 15%. I don't know if that's normal or if it's just going to continue after a while but we'll see the firmware didn't even install so I had to go to worst case scenario and buy a new SSD so I went from spending 20 bucks on a cheap SSD to 50 on a Samsung SSD in the middle of my homework when I got this package it's either the new SSD or my go mic let's take a look okay here we are geek squad certified checking the shipping it said it would probably come today and I am ordering another package from them, and there it is. Now it's glory compared to my old and crappy whatever this thing was, Inland SSD. Okay, they really sealed it to the box there. My new Samsung solid state drive. And this is twice the size of the old one, and um, it's a lot nicer. You can feel this whole thing is like metal. I don't even know if that's metal or like some fiberglass. And 250 gigabytes, it may not be like a ton, like a terabyte, you know, I didn't want to pay a ton of money, and it was like 50 bucks, so this was 20. And, um, honestly, this, this should work a lot better, and maybe even be faster, so we'll take a look at that. Alright, so here's the two SSDs, and what I plan on doing is copying everything off of this one and just cloning it to this drive. And really, um, I think the Windows version did actually work on here. It gave me an accessible boot device, which may be um, from like either corrupted Windows files, which you could do reg back, which is no longer backed up on Windows, or you could um, it could just be a problem with the drive itself, which I'm hoping is a problem with the drive itself, um, because it's turned into a read-only drive, which is really weird. But um, the problem with it is that it just couldn't be written on, and so Windows was not booting; it was inaccessible. So basically. All the files on here are still good, it's just the drive isn't. So if we copy everything from this to the other, hoping that everything clones and there's not more problems with this, then 
OpenCI, but um, if this will work, I can copy it to the other one and totally just get everything back to the way it was. Now I am restarting so I can clone the disk, and I'm not really sure if it was going to work because it seemed kind of sketchy at the beginning. Um, if so, I can kind of, um, I guess quickly kind of uh, install Windows and then just copy all my saves from um, software, configuration from software, and saves from maybe like games, stuff like that. Just copy that over to my new um, installation and then hopefully everything works out with all the licenses that I have. Hopefully I can get that easily done. So right now it is um, working on the partitions. It doesn't seem to be working. I think the reason is because they cannot write anything to any of the, or the one disk. So basically what they're doing is it's uh, trying to write, okay we're going to clone this disk. So they write a little thing on the disk they can't write to it so I can't even detect the jobs and it just didn't detect the jobs and just went on I might have to just do a fresh install of Windows which might be the best choice I just wanted to get I had a ton of programs installed and it would just be a lot easier to do this but um, I'm gonna try a few more things and if it fails then I will just do a clean install of Windows don't even ask what I was thinking when I was just copying straight up copying all the files from SSD 1 to SSD 2 um, I'm just going to skip past this part because it didn't work. Before installing Windows, we're going to have to install the SSD into the new computer. So here's just all my uh, storage. So I have my terabyte hard drive. No, it's not something crazy big, but I have my 8 terabyte in there. So. Um, this is just for extra storage on my PC, the 250 gigabyte um, Samsung SSD. And honestly, even though 250 gigabytes isn't a ton of storage today, look at how much it changed over time. This was two, a 250 gigabyte uh, hard drive from around like I don't know, 2007, something like that. And this is a thick hard drive, and compare it to the terabyte hard drive, and um, and compare it to the uh, SSD here. I mean that's over time we have really gotten um, upgrades with our storage and that is tremendously faster than this because this thing doesn't really have any cable management options I'd say it's not too bad um, cable management you know in a in a case that had some more options because basically this is just the end of the case there's no little compartments to run your cables through and really that's all you can do so it's not too darn bad with um with um, a case without this cable management but you know it's okay so we'll test it out now we're booting up okay well, so let's see here we've got here it is got my hard drive one terabyte and we have my Samsung SSD. So it's working good. Now we're gonna have to install Windows. We get touch from the clothes we wear to the things we like to say. Now here's an inexperienced tip you shouldn't care, you should do them anyway. I know that because I'm 17, this song won't be taken seriously. Maybe that's the point. I don't know much about life, and I know even less about living. Alright, here we are. Freshly installed windows Now you can see there's a lot of stuff to be done like graphics card drivers. This is all messed up here uh, The other screen isn't even on There's a ton to be Configured here and installed so um, This is really it and it's on a Samsung SSD. It should be pretty fast um, Let me just make sure everything is installed correctly and yeah, there we go And that was a full restart done in 8 seconds. Now I don't know what that is compared to the hard drive and the older SSD because I don't remember the times, but um, you'll see them right here. On No, you actually won't. And this is where I tell you why the SSD, well the inland SSD, actually was slower than the hard drive. 
the inland SSD, I did a full restart. The hard drive, I did a kind of like a turn off, turn back on, which does like a, I think like a hibernation mode or something. Some weird Windows thing which makes it boot up faster, which is nice, but I guess it's not nice for capturing times. Anyway, even if it's a fast SSD, if it died after a month, it's not a good SSD because the speed doesn't matter when it's dead. So. All in all, I think the Samsung SSD is the best compared to the hard drive and definitely compared to the Inland SSD. Inland's time was cut in half by the Samsung and the hard drive I didn't do a full restart so that was kind of eliminated but I'm sure the hard drive was pretty slow too. Though I don't have my notes in front of me, um, I believe it was the Fison 11 controller that controlled the SSD and the problem was the controller was very unreliable and that unreliability caused it to fail even worse than a hard drive and so it would just fail in, to a read only state and I saw a lot of people had this problem with the Kingston SSD. So um, a lot of cheap SSDs use this controller, so I just recommend not getting a cheap SSD. You don't necessarily have to get a Samsung. I got a Samsung because I just had a bad experience with a cheap one, and I just want to make sure I got a good one after that because, you know, there's something about getting two bad ones in a row. I don't know. So um, anyway, uh, this is just, it was kind of hard to get this all working, and I know this was a long video. But I got it um, all done, and also again with the SSDs, the um, thing is, ones that have um, some can be slower. So I was gonna say, uh, the one SSD, the inland SSD, could actually be slower than a hard drive because it doesn't have a certain RAM chip inside. Um, I don't remember too much about that uh, on the, off the top of my head, but uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. Um, cheap SSDs aren't as good as real, basically real SSDs. Um, but yeah. Hope you enjoyed this video, uh, I'll make more tech content soon, I know this is a long video, but it was a hard one, I've been filming for a while for this one, I didn't actually upload it yet, and then suddenly, computers died, SSD broke, so um, yeah, and I hope you like the new mic, I have a new mic here uh, for the narrations, it's the Sam Samson um, Go mic, and uh, it's actually very nice, good quality even for like a small one of this size and it's kind of nice because it like clips onto your laptop um, if you need it to. So yeah, uh, hope you enjoyed the content. Subscribe, like if you liked it. Dislike, that's fine too. Um, uh, tell me some recommendations down in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video.